good night wherever you are and welcome to Mini Indie Game Reviews, a place where I'll be reviewing indie games that are quick, sweet, and straight to the point. Today we're going to be looking at Golf Club Wasteland, which is the first and debut game coming from the developers over there at Demigod Studios, with according to the website, the second title being in the works by the name of Hot Water coming out in 2023. This game was also published through Untold Tales, which is the same publisher that gave us the game Hong Kong Massacre. And as you would know, I'm rocking with the PlayStation 4 version, so let's get into it. So this game is set in a possible future where something known as the Great Catastrophe has occurred. Essentially, nature threw a temple tantrum, leaving planet Earth as we know it to be a deserted wasteland, as the title entails. The people who was either fortunately lucky or financially able, aka rich, was able to take refuge and escape to Mars. As for the other unfortunate people, well, you can use your imagination on that. Majority of the time when you're playing this game, the player will hear other people's different experiences in regards to them escaping the Great Catastrophe, current events, and how they're adapting to their new way of life via this radio station known as Radio Nostalgia from Mars. And since the player is one of the few rich or fortunate people to escape, the main character will just be participating in what the rich people do now, which is visiting the Earth from time to time, an abandoned post-apocalyptic planet which is now just considered a huge golf course to play on. This game looks really nice, depicting the aftermath of what was once inhabited by a civilization creates an atmosphere of being alone and isolated. When I played this game in the earlier levels, the camera is somewhat close up, showing the golfer amongst decrepit buildings and well illustrated environments with shadows of creatures and other things in the foreground. Really it looks like you're playing within the children's picture book. For me personally, I didn't get the sense of isolation until I hit those levels where the camera is panned out and I'm up on top of these skyscrapers looking at what used to be a city. Abandoned malls and facilities, places where the water is just messed up with litter in it, mutated creatures and appearances from figures that may be the negative outcome of a world uncared for. There were even some animals that I guess for some artificial realism was placed in these areas. It's cute, but sadly it can nowhere emulate that of which is more than likely extinct now. This game has fluid animations and is very colorful. There were no frame drops whatsoever and the laws of physics seems to be logical, intact, and relevant. For a game that is dark on the topic of discussion, this game is bright and sometimes seems somewhat serene. This is a very simple game to play. The main objective is putting the ball in a hole that is positioned and recognized by this flag. You know, like regular golf. But in order to accomplish this task, the player will have to input two things, the length and width of how you're going to hit the ball. Doing this will determine the trajectory of how much power is going to be applied once the ball is striked. Now it would be one thing if that is all the player had to take under consideration, but that wouldn't be realistic now would it? Other obstacles that the player will have to end up becoming familiar with is what type of angle you're going to hit the ball to make sure that the ball doesn't go over a ledge, wind direction in certain areas, and also understanding how much effect that gravity will have on your approximate calculated action. One thing that I like about this game is how creative the level designs are and how some surprising occurrences can end up helping you. However, one if not the only thing that you must have within playing this game is patience. There was this one level where I was working my way up the stage in order to put myself in the best position to get across this environment, but then one wrong move made me start all over until I can get the desired outcome. I can't begin to tell you how irritating it was because when I messed up, I began sounding like the character when it hits the ball too many times. But their chemicals used as rocket fuel they're easy to store, but they're highly toxic. One piece of advice that I have is try scoping out the landscape first. There is more than one way to complete a stage, and it all comes down to either doing it the easy way or the time-consuming fun way. Sometimes your environment will offer more assortments of ways to finish it. You have tools that you can try to hit the ball into, and you also have buttons that if not mandatory, you can aim and hit in order to open doors or initiate some alteration to the stage. Oh, and the last thing I can't go without mentioning are the different difficulty modes to pick from to test your skills. It goes from a regular mode where you can keep trying to put the ball in a hole with unlimited attempts. That is, until the game gets frustrated with you and asks if you want to skip this stage. Next, you have a mode where your ball explodes after a certain number of attempts. And lastly, is where you cannot make a mistake or else you're going to have to start all over again. This particular mode is for the masochist. It's either that or you're just playing God at this game. But to each his own. Overall, the gameplay is pretty alright. The music for Golf Club Wasteland comes off like a playlist, or rather a compilation project composed of some of the most diverse and multi-genre songs split up by skits as callers call in to talk about their opinions of adjusting to their new lifestyle. You may have noticed that it doesn't rain here on Mars, so another friendly reminder that showers are strictly limited to 30 seconds each, with no exceptions. Corporate is looking into extending this time frame but he's meeting resistance from Section BC who want lab rat urine to be excluded from the water recycling program, which will actually reduce allocated shower times to 27 seconds. This kind of makes playing this game a smooth, enjoyable experience. The program Radio Nostalgia from Mars is how the music is going to be played and serve as a normal radio station. 
kind of like what you will hear in those Grand Theft Auto games while driving. Now even though this is a radio station, all the music was actually done by Igor Simic and Shane Berry. I'll talk about Igor Simic along with other important topics in a different section, if you want to stick around for that. Mr. Igor Simic, I believe, is the person that serves as the host hosting a project kind of like how a DJ would, but when it comes to the actual musical composition, I believe Shane Berry is the architect. Most if not all of the songs on this OST sound pretty vast and possesses somewhat of a high quality electronic feel to them that personally sent me back to like 80 cent retro pop, but updated for modern times. A perfect example of this is the song Creatures from the World, and other songs like Take My Hand featuring Anna Kersen, a singer and songwriter based in Bregay, Serbia, delivers this stunning performance. Her vocals behind this foreboding and ever so building instrumentation is just magnificent. Mr. Shane Berry has other projects that you can peep out on his official website. I will provide the links in the description below. Golf Club Wasteland original soundtrack is from what I can see only available to those who purchased the game, but you can go on Demigod Studios YouTube page to see a few of the songs along with the ones that I mentioned accompanied by animated visuals. Take my hand. Fue una luz que iluminó todo mi ser. Tu risa como manantial llenó mi vida de inquietud. Now for the game sound design, I mean it sounds exactly what you would expect. You're playing golf so I wouldn't think hearing a golf ball being hit would sound all that complex. However, some of the stages brought a couple of things that were noticeable and pleasant that pretty much added more to the game's experience. Such as that one time when I heard this techno dance number that was muffled until I got inside this building. The natural sounds of the water being heard when a golf ball has been hit into it. The air when it blows or even the creatures you come in contact with. Overall, the sound design for Golf Club's Wasteland sounds pretty good. And peep this, it was also done by Shane Berry as well. With everything covered, I'm going to give Golf Club Wasteland an 8 out of 10. The visuals are well put together, including the presence of iconic topics represented by images. The gameplay is simple and doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand. The music is somber and can really make you feel alone in this game's world at times. I really enjoyed this game. Golf Club Wasteland is now available for Steam and Epic Games for PC, PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, and Xbox One. The price tag would be $10, but you get the original soundtrack plus a visual continuation of what happens to the character you play as. So for $10, you're pretty much getting a bundle, really. I believe this game is worth picking up. Now, this is usually where I end my review, but there is a segment that I'm going to be talking about some of the interesting parallels between this game and real life. If you don't want to hear all that, consider this the end of the video. And until next time, be safe out there, and peace y'all. And don't forget to like and subscribe, hit up that notification bell, and I, I gotta go. Alrighty, you have reached to this particular segment within this video and um, congratulations. Um, in this portion, I'm going to be talking about certain things that I'm seeing just from an observer's perspective. And many people will qualify this as being political. And I know people don't like politics within their video games. And well, this is the internet and that is considered what, like being in the danger zone or something like that. Or quite possibly, <laughs> I might get canceled. But anyway, these are just things that I'm just... You know things that i'm just looking at that i kind of find somewhat ironic and terrifying but anyway here we go as charming as this game appears there are a whole lot of unspoken commentary that serves as a warning of a possible future of what could happen to us in the real world let's look at some examples shall we or rather the two main big examples that can be found within this one sentence the first thing this sentence talks about is the great ecological catastrophe now, over here in the West, or should I say the United States, we have probably pissed off Mother Nature so much so that all four natural elements, depending on which corner of the country you live on, might have a negative effect on your life. Look at that tornado! Or at least during the time of this recording, anyway. On the West Coast, you have... It's not just the eastern United States facing the consequences of climate change and extreme weather. Drought and wildfires are plaguing the western United States. The Caldor Fire has destroyed nearly 600 homes in California's Lake Tahoe area. More than 50,000 people have been displaced from their homes, and roads are clogged as mandatory evacuations spread to Nevada. Then on the East Coast... 
The view from the air today, mile after mile underwater. Evidence of the disaster left after Tropical Storm Ida barreled through the northeast overnight. Up closer, on the ground, havoc stretching as far as the eye can see. A surreal landscape from the streets to the subways to submerged cars. Then lastly, within the south, what my homies refer to as the third coast. It was just four days ago when Ida first made landfall in southern Louisiana, but the aftermath from this monster storm still upending lives across that state. Neighborhoods like this turned into swamps. Many roads submerged. From the air, you can see just how many neighborhoods suffered this catastrophic water damage. The reason behind all of these natural events is pretty much suspected to be pointed towards the effects of climate change. For years, the topic of climate change has been debated about. The rate, okay. the rate is okay. the problem. Now here's the thing, half the people in the world live on sea coasts. As we get the ocean a little bit warmer, the ocean's going to expand, and people no, living no, on the you're, sea coast you're, you're are going to be displaced. Hold on, but you're not answering no, no, my I'm question. About the speed no, no, of, yes, you're I describing I'm what about will the happen speed if of this climate continues. Change. Warm ocean waters are the fuel for hurricanes. Climate change also likely um, intensified the rainfall associated with the system. You had 3.15 inches of rain in New York City in a single hour, which is the most on record. And the rainfall rates and the rainfall amounts we saw in New York City are only expected to occur about once every 200 to 500 years. And I'm it's asking you a simple question. Hold on. I'm asking you a simple question about the rate of climate change. So the rate, you said that it would be happening, but that rate has accelerated because of human activity. And I'm asking you The word you very accelerated simply, is an understatement. Okay, it's happening okay, extraordinarily fast. I'm asking you a fast. simple question. Experts attributing the frequency of these extreme rainfall events to human-caused climate change. In reality, what was once the 100-year flood, the flood that had about a 1% chance of happening any given year, isn't the 100-year flood anymore. You have some people that believe it exists and will ultimately shape the future of how people and where people will be able to live at. Climate change and our environmental challenges are the, one of the biggest existential threats to our way of life. And then on the other hand, you have people that believe that climate change isn't a thing and just believe that these natural occurrences or disasters are just isolated incidents stringed together. It's usually this or that they actually believe that dealing with all this climate change and the topic of climate change is a way for a political side to gain some advantage. That's how so the much world of this you don't know, for you pretend that you know, but you don't know, I and you believe people with you, who sir. ask I you I really questions. have to disagree with you. Well, I've spent a lot I, of time look, with this topic. I'm open-minded, you are not. And and we're out of okay. time, unfortunately. So, Thank you for joining you know, you us. You guys are. If you are a person living on this planet, your future is in peril. That's a scientific fact. And yes, there are other issues that are all very important: the pandemic, uh, systemic racism, income inequality, immigration, gun violence. But here's the thing: if we don't address climate change, none of those issues will matter at all. The car is going off a cliff, and we're fiddling with the radio. We are way past climate denial now. Oh, yeah. Oh, we got to act soon. And you have to give us more power or else you'll die. <laughs> because it turns out the root cause of climate change is not actually carbon. It's you. You did it. So cognitive distance is not a delusion. It's a feature. It's human nature. So we okay. in the science community are looking for an explanation why climate change deniers or extreme skeptics uh, do not accept the overwhelming scientific evidence for climate change. And the most reasonable explanation is you have a worldview, and then you have evidence, and the evidence disagrees with your worldview, so you deny the evidence, and then along right. with that, you deny the authorities that are providing the evidence. Now, if you have a better hypothesis for why climate deniers uh, deny the overwhelming scientific evidence, Bring it on. It's not a delusion. It's just like the fox and the grapes. But regardless of your stance on the subject matter, from a regular everyday type of person's perspective, it's undeniable that something is going on with the weather and it ain't looking too good. Press me. Besides, there's nothing wrong with the planet. The planet is fine. The people are fucked. And we have the conceit to think that somehow we're a threat, that somehow we're going to put in jeopardy this beautiful little blue-green ball that's just a floating around the sun? Planet has been through a lot worse than us. Planet isn't going anywhere. We are. We're going away. We're going away. Pack your shit, folks. We're going away.
The second thing I want to talk about is the ultra rich moving to Tesla City located on this planet called. Write this down. M A R S Mars, bitches. That's where we are going. Mars. Red rocks. Yay, yay. Okay, so during the past couple of years, Mars and discovering other planets to inhabit has become the topic of discussion. So when do when do human beings uh, start going up in it, do you think? So we expect to complete version two of Dragon, which will have astronaut transport capability uh, in about two years. And most of what you do now is, is send uh, satellites uh, up into space, right? That's yeah. how you pay the bills. Exactly. But you want to do something much more ambitious with SpaceX. Yeah, the, 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 I mean, the long-term aspiration is to develop the technologies necessary to transport a large number of people and cargo to, to Mars um, in order to create a self-sustaining civilization. And if you know anything about Tesla, you will know that this name itself is a brand commonly known to produce advanced technological breakthroughs and discoveries. So if you're talking about Tesla, then you'll know that the name is synonymous with being expensive, aka the bankruptcy of a normal everyday person's bank account. Not too long ago, it was revealed that Tesla has its own robot coming out, and so far has created standard-of-the-art cars that some of them can actually drive themselves. I kinda do have my worries about that, but the simple fact that it runs on renewable energy kinda says to me that it's trying to be eco-friendly. For me personally, I'm okay with anything that's being eco-friendly. It sends the message of somebody being environmentally responsible. With that in mind in regards to Tesla cars, it's alright with me, but that's only when they're not bursting into flames. A Tesla Model S Plaid burst into flames earlier this week while the owner was driving it, just three days after delivery. The driver's attorney says the driver was initially not able to get out of the car as the locks malfunctioned and he had to force his way to the door, through the door, to escape. I don't doubt for one second that Tesla is cutting edge and is in possession of some of the most advanced artificial intelligence integrated into their products that can one day make the United States be like on some ghost in the shell futuristic paradise of some sort and hopefully not the Matrix or Terminator outcome. Also recently, Tesla shot one of his cars into outer space that recently circled Mars because, well, why not? But he isn't the only rich person that's keen on space ventures. Jeff Bezos took to the stars as well, probably just for the simple fact that he could. Now that I look at it, a somewhat rich bald-headed man in a spacesuit playing golf sounds like something I would imagine Jeff Bezos doing. For all I know, the main character could be based off of him. It's a reach, but it's not too far-fetched. If you look up Igor Simic, one of the people that's responsible for the game's soundtrack, you'll sort of see how this game's and the narrative share a common speculation of humanity's possible downfall through some dark humor. And get a sneak peek at future problems that will eventually solve themselves, right? A clear example would be the director video entitled The End Times, which is essentially this news parody where an anchor talks about the ridiculous things that are going on. I recommend you peeping out the video on his official website, and I will provide links to where you can do so as well. He provides a whole lot of social commentary in regards to various topics through a somewhat abstract but creative videos. He talks about relationships, existential crisis, and even concerns dealing with how technology and people affect each other. From his perspective, this game is a perfect fit for him to be on board with. Not to mention the simple fact that he's offering an exclusive $500 million edition in order to help fund his trip off this doomed planet. And no, I'm not kidding, there's actually an article of him actually doing this. In the article, it says that Golf Club Wasteland started off as pure satire. The ultra-rich playing golf on the remains of a civilization after initially fleeing to Mars as Earth crumbled thanks to consumerism, climate disaster, and Silicon Valley fuel greed. Now don't that sound familiar? As the article goes on, he says, well now, I'm not laughing anymore. These rocket obsessed billionaires like Musk, Bezos, and Branson's are already packing their designer bags, so it's time I sorted out my own ticket off this doomed planet. And you know the most terrifying thing about all this? He actually may have a point. But anyway, if you got to this point in the video and if you want to talk more about this, um, go ahead and comment below. But until next time, y'all stay safe out there, and peace y'all.